What's going on, you guys? Marvin Francois here, and today is a very special day because I have my guy, the one, the only, Mr. Dion Coopwood, a.k.a. Mr. Phenomenal, here today, and we're going to be getting into any and everything. We're talking credit. We're talking Metro 2, compliance dispute, and business funding, how you can get 100 k in business credit, and so much more. I'm extremely excited to get into it. But before we do that, if you haven't already, go ahead and take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right here, right now. Just go ahead and slap that like button and show this video some love. But without further ado, let's get right into it. My guy. What's good, brother? Come on, man. Show me some love, man. How are you? I'm all good. I, I didn't know it was going to be this cold here. Nah, nah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, Coming it, from Chicago, y'all yeah. got us beat. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's really bad. I don't know what's going on, brother. If yeah. I knew, I would have scheduled it a little bit better. But you here. That's all that matters. <laughs> that's right? it, bro. That's it. Man, I'm excited to see you. I this is a long you, time in the making. You know it. It's it's about to be fire flames. They don't. I don't think they know what's about to happen. Here. It's about to be. It's hey. They about to get ready. Yeah. It's 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 about to be Take like a no seat. other. You know, get get your get your pen and paper. You know out, what I mean. Heat some hot chocolate up. This is about to be a, be, a beautiful one. This is about to be a really really good. Absolutely. How you feel, man? I feel good, man. Uh, blessed, highly favored. Hey, Amen. I can't complain. Mm -hmm. I got up today. He he got me up. So. I'm good. I'm just ready to dominate the day, bro. That's, That's it. it. I love it. That's I love it. it. Listen, well, you know, there are a lot of people watching right now who unfortunately mm -hmm. don't know who you are. So before we get into the, into the, the meat and potatoes of it yep. all, yep. tell the audience about who you are, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself so we gotcha. can get started. Got you. Man, I am a six-year uh, six entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I've pretty much for the last six years just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, a lot of people want to get into entrepreneur. They look at somebody like myself who has success mm -hmm. and they say, dang, what is it going to take? Man, I'll tell you what, just for the last six years, I just had to jump right into it, mm -hmm. had to make it make sense. I right. uh, figured it all out. And we talking about married man with three kids. Mm. And I'm like, hey, I got to do what I got to do for my family. Right. Right. And so now I'm six years in serial entrepreneur and, uh, you know, just been having major success mm -hmm. and just loving just just you know being appreciative of every single day mm -hmm. and just being able to wake up in my day being my day. Love it. So that's who I am. You know, located out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh I'm looking to I'm looking to relocate soon too. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. we 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 ain't gonna talk about that. Not but yet, not yet, yeah, not we go, we go we go, but that's you know, like I love Chicago, you know, mm -hmm. that's why I was raised at and uh that that's a part of you know my home and my heart, you know what I mean? But right. Uh, at the end of the day, I think that uh, you know my, my talents potentially may need to be used elsewhere. You know, I love it. You know how LeBron went to Miami. Yeah, right? yeah you taking you taking your talents <laughs> elsewhere. You are you going to South Beach too? No, 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 not South Beach. I might, I might. It's, it's on, it's on, it's on the list. It yeah, might just be. It's definitely on there. But dope, man. That's that's very very dope. So you know, one thing I one thing that attracted me uh, to you on top of everything else is me. You kind of come from the same background okay. of credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and we, we we both emphasize how important credit is, and what's crazy is. Yeah. Much like the uh, audience member that's watching right now, mm -hmm. you know, coming from a black household like you did and like I did, yeah. our introduction to credit probably wasn't all the best, nope, right? No, nope. I'm not sure what yours was, but nope. mine was very simple. It was, it was stay away from credit. Yep. Only use it for gas and emergencies. Yep. Credit is bad. It'll ruin your life. The yep. list goes on and on and on, right? Yeah. Yep. But now, years removed from that, coming into entrepreneurship, we've been exposed to a whole new world. As it pertains to credit. And yeah. there are a lot of people who are now slowly but surely through people like yourself, Absolutely. through people like myself, Absolutely. start to learn about how, nah, credit actually isn't bad. Credit is life changing. Ooh. And that's not hyperbolic, ladies and gentlemen. That's fact, not fiction. That's fiction. facts. You understand? Facts. So while I have you here, talk to the audience. For those that may know, talk a little bit about what your introduction to credit was and also in your walk as an entrepreneur, how yep. credit has literally changed your life for the better. All right, it's interesting. Uh, my introductory to credit uh, I was going off to college, man, and my mom, she handed me this little plastic thing. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I was like, because there was no introduction. Right. So that's the truth. I, there was no introduction. There was no education. Mm -hmm. There was no knowledge behind it. Like you said, you know, anything that I've heard about credit was just like, don't don't ever do that. Don't touch credit cards. Don't, don't mess with it. But before I went off to college, man, uh, my mom handed me a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. It was a Capital One card. It had mm -hmm. a $300 limit on it. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, that was like 19 years ago. Yeesh. Man, she, she was like, hey, listen. And exactly what you said. She said, this card is for emergency purposes only. She said, if you ever, you know, while you're down there at school, if you ever need some additional cash, like if I can't give it to you at that time, mm -hmm. this card is for that. If you ever in an emergency, you ever like need to get some gas, mm -hmm. if you ever catch a flat tire, mm -hmm. use this card, but only for that. And let me know when you use so I can pay it for you. I'm like, Boom. All right, cool. That was my introduction. Right. Now, when you're talking about being an entrepreneur and understanding the importance of it, I got in, I got, I became an entrepreneur because of credit. Right. Like, I became an entrepreneur 
I decided that working a job was no longer for me mm-hmm. six years ago. Mm-hmm. And I was able to comfortably walk off the job because at that time I had like 30 to 40 grand mm. in credit. Mm. And I used that as a segue to allow me to go ahead and transition out of the job. Right. I'm talking about, I was comfortable. I was making six figures at the right. job. But I right. said, I know I can I can do good as an entrepreneur. And so what I did was I at that time I had a uh, I had a ten thousand dollar Discover It card. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? I had and I had I had two Amex joints. I had a, a eight thousand dollar Amex, and I think I had like a uh was like a fifteen thousand. I forget what it was exactly, mm-hmm. but those three cards allowed me to transition into entrepreneurship. So I said, well, while I'm trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. I was using that to pay my mortgage, to pay my car notes, you know what I mean? Take care, still put food on the table. Right. So I went from not really understanding anything about credit Mm -hmm. to I put myself in a position to be able to really like leverage my entire lifestyle off of having credit. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. that was, that's my story. That's my introductory. Mm -hmm. And then that's just really like the foundation of how I really got into understanding how really how powerful credit was, brother. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Man, that's huge. Those So you mean to tell me those same pieces of plastic that your mom told you, hey, gas and emergencies, that's it, allowed you to take that transition from going from a nice, comfortable six-figure job For sure. to your introduction, your segue into entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Man, that's huge. Yep. That's absolutely huge, man. Yep. And, you know, I talk about it all the time on my channel. Credit is everything. It you know, the same way it's changed your life, it's changed my life. And, you know, we do things like this. We have platforms like this to show people that are watching Absolutely. that that piece of plastic that your Aunt Mabel or your, your Uncle Tony <laughs> told you, like, yo, stay away from it. If you have the information, if you're surrounded by the right people, it can change your life, yeah, brother. Yeah. It can absolutely can. Now, you know, anybody I bring on here, I make sure I do my due diligence. I make sure I do my research. So I, I, I did some research into okay, you, brother. Okay. I found something. I found out something that's extremely interesting because, okay. like I said, me and you come from the same background, right? For we sure. Both, we both come from credit. Yep. But I'd be remiss if I bring somebody on here to talk about credit and I don't talk about credit repair because that's that's yep. that's my real bread and butter, for right? For sure, for sure, yeah. So I'm doing my research on you, and you know what's interesting? Because when we talk about credit repair, we know about factual disputing, for right? Sure, yeah. I've made some videos about factual disputing using yep. things like the FCRA, right? We talk about consumer law. Yeah. One of, a person that we both cool with, Mr. Deraine DeLevante, I brought yep, him on here. That's my boy. That's my guy. Shout out Deraine if you yes, watch sir. this. Yes, yeah. sir. Killer. Killer, yeah, yeah. right? I had him on here. He he talks a lot. He's heavy on the consumer law, for sure, team, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a there's a third field, brother. There's a third field that I still haven't tapped into yet on this channel that you actually specialize in. Yep. That 99 percent people don't even know about as it pertains to the world of credit repair, and that's consumer. Ba- excuse me, not co- compliance based disputing. Yep. Right. And for those of the, for those of people who are watching right now who aren't familiar with compliance based disputing, compliance based disputing, if I'm correct, is based around something called Metro Two. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So for the, for anybody that's watching right now that may not be familiar with this, and now their eyes are glazing because everybody on my channel they love credit repair. Any, <laughs> they, they love they love any and everything they can use to fix their credit up. Yep. They want it, right? Yep. So I, yep. I had to bring on a compliance based, you know what I'm saying, yep. specialist on here himself to talk yep. about it. Yep. Can you give us a little bit of, of, a, of a breakdown as to what exactly compliance-based disputing is, what exactly Metro 2 is, yeah, and yeah. how we can go about using it in the world of credit repair? Okay. Well, before I start, I want to tell everybody, please take notes. Mm-hmm. Get your, this is it. Take your this paper is, out. This right here is like, it's, I, I'm, I'm still confused on how nobody knows about Metro right. 2 compliance and you know using this tactic in order to actually get results in regards to credit repair. To me... This is this this has to be the strongest method of being able to get items accurately removed off of a credit report. Okay. And so let me break it down. So the first thing is that you said you had our guy, Durain, come on here. He talked about consumer law. Mm-hmm. Well, there are laws and there are acts are in place to protect consumers when it comes to the credit reporting compliance, right? Facts. So when we talk about the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? Mm-hmm. This is this is an act to protect us as consumers when we talk about credit being reporting. Mm-hmm. Then you have the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Mm. Say that, hey, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> Don't, we, listen, I want to make sure people take it. No, say it again, brother. Say it again. I'm you sorry, got bro. the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Go ahead. Then you got the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Okay. These are acts that says the, the credit has to be reported fairly. Mm-hmm. And then it says that every consumer has to have the equal opportunity mm-hmm. because you can't have you can't have a better opportunity at credit than I have. That, mm-hmm. that that doesn't make it fair. That's not an equal opportunity. That's facts. So this is what people talk about 
man, over there in the United States, you guys got it great. You living in the land of the free. You live, you got land of opportunity. Right. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about credit. Right. Other nations don't necessarily have credit. They don't mm -hmm. have the same opportunity that we have. Mm -hmm. So when you look at these two acts, they're in, in place to protect us, right? Right, right. So since they're in place to protect us, what, what ended up happening was in order to support these laws, mm -hmm. there was a system put in place mm -hmm. in order to protect us when we talk about these specific laws, and that's a system called EOSCAR, right? Mm -hmm. you, are you following? I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm you here. Me, right? I'm here. I'm here. We got to make sure they with me. I'm, 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 sure I'm, try, I'm you, trying to go slow. Yeah, yeah. Take your time, brother. <laughs> take, it, take us to church. You take us to I'm church, saying? brother. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. So when you think about that, EOSCAR was put in place because they didn't want humans sitting around emotionally mm -hmm. not doing their job. Facts. So when we send in letters, those letters get fed through a system called EOSCAR. It's an electronic database. Right. And it's all based on coding, right? Right. And the reason why these acts and this system had to get put in place is because there was a, how do I want to put it? There was like a, a, a research done, and it showed that from January of 16 to February of 17, mm -hmm. 50,000 people filed complaints on improper information being filed on their credit report. Mm -hmm. That means that it would... This is just the complaints. Right. We just talk about just people that just said, let's just complain. Right, 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 I'm right. I'm pretty sure that number was way greater than 50,000. We right. talk about how many people are on the planet Earth. But we talk about, at the very bare minimum, 50,000 people decided that they wanted to complain about inaccurate information being filed that they... They said this is that has nothing to do with me on my credit report. Fact. That's fifty thousand people that can't get a home. Mm -hmm. Fifty thousand people that can't go get a car. Mm. Fifty thousand people that can't get lines of credit. Mm. Fifty thousand people. I mean, fifty thousand people. These are just the fifty thousand that complain that said I don't have the fair opportunity because of what's on my credit report, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, we got these acts. We got this system that's in place to, in order to protect us as consumers, right? How was this system compiled in order to make sure that? The information that's on the credit report is deemed accurate or even reportable. That compliance standard that e. Oscar was comprised of is called Metro Two. Mm, you see what I'm saying? You getting you getting spicy? Go ahead. You see what going, I'm keep saying? Going, keep going. Keep going. So when you look at how everything is structured, right. and you have to start from the bottom and you got to break it all the way down, mm -hmm. Metro Two is the compliance standard that that tells the three major credit bureaus and Innovis because mm -hmm. what happened was to protect to actually support those acts, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, and one of the secondary bureaus that's becoming big, which is Innovis, mm -hmm. they had to put together this compliance of e. Oscar and Metro 2. They put that together. Okay. They, you okay. see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm dropping it. Like, on, I'm man. giving it to them straight. And we just getting started. You see what I'm together. saying? Oh, my goodness. Like, this was, this was, this is put in place to protect us. So, mm -hmm. when, when you use Metro 2 mm -hmm. to go against negative items that's on your credit report, you have a way greater chance of getting items deleted because mm. you're not saying that I see the item and there's some inaccurate information. You're saying, no, system, here's the proper coding and information. Mm. And I'm telling you that this information should not be on here. Facts. It can't even be reported. Facts. So the system says, okay, since you sent in this letter mm -hmm. and it's got all the proper coding and then you're saying that this account needs to be deleted for X, Y, and Z reasons, we're just going to delete it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you're saying that this account was being reported in compliant. It, it went against the standard deviation of the laws, the acts, and the reason and why the system was put in place. So w since it went against the standard deviation, we, we have no choice but to delete it. Mm -hmm. And then you know how sometimes the creditors want to try to fight back and try to keep accounts on there, right? Mm -hmm. When you send in a Metro 2 compliant uh, a letter into the reporting agencies, they have to do directly com like communicate with the creditors, mm -hmm. and the creditors have to commute directly back and forth. And so there is communication that if the timing is off, if the reportability is off, mm -hmm. if the compliance standard is off, mm -hmm. we talk about there are so many different reasons why mm -hmm. these items have no choice but to get deleted. This is why the the, the chances of you being able to get that eviction off, mm -hmm. that bankruptcy off, that repossession off, those student loans off. We talking about Child support off. I didn't get stuff. I didn't get it. Anything under the sun is deleted. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we ain't talking about, well, it might take me six months. Mm -hmm. It might take me nine months. It might take me. I talked to so many people that say, well, yeah, this guy been working on my credit for a year. With Metro 2, mm -hmm. 
It'll take that long. Come on, man. You getting me excited, <laughs> brother. Give you those, say, say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Hey, with Metro 2, it'll take that long. I think that just might be the slogan. Metro 2, it'll, it'll take, take that, that long. long. Come on, brother. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. It'll take Goodness that long. gracious. Look, nah. I don't think you understand what you just did. I'm telling you, I know my audience. Yeah. Somebody's on the other end of their screen right now salivating. They that should. you just told them about Metro 2. They should. They, tears of joy are coming from their eye because you just told them about Metro 2. Can I, can I, look, let me, let, me, let, me, let me keep it real with you. I'm, I'm just going to be transparent. Be transparent, brother. When I started in this industry, mm -hmm. and I'm just, I'm being transparent. I this already was, know where you're going. Go ahead. This was about maybe a year or so ago when mm -hmm. I started this industry. Brother, I started out Faction Disputing. Me and you both. And I'm sitting there falling asleep up whoop, to 2, 3 in the morning. Putting them I, envelopes in them. I'm talking about, I'm putting in work. <laughs> And then I got introduced to Metro 2. Yep. And I said, oh, there is a guy. Yeah. <laughs> because it changed, it changed the whole trajectory of my business. In Jesus' name. In in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Like it changed. I said, wow. Mm -hmm. This is this is this mm -hmm. is it, right? I've been looking for something mm -hmm. and I found it. And it changed my whole business structure. I'm talking about people call me now. Like at the beginning, it was I struggled getting results. Right, I really did, mm -hmm. and I was confident, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But I, the results wasn't really backing up mm -hmm. how confident I was. Right, right, right. And now it's like I got a system that supports my level of confidence. Mm -hmm. So now I got people that call me like, "Brother, what are you doing over there?" Yeah. I, I've, I've had three, four, five people working on my credit report, and you're the first person, and it just bring me joy, man. Right, it just bring me joy because for me. It's not even about the accolades or the praise. It's for me, it's more about the clients getting the results because right. now you can go ahead and get that dream car. Facts. Now you can go ahead and get that dream house Facts. and do everything else that you need to do. So I just love, I just love it. I love it. It's a great system. Man, listen. Listen. <laughs> listen. You can't, you can't come on here talking that talk like that, man. man. Hey. We, we, we just got started. You can't come here talking that talk like I got that. To. Man. I got to. Look, Metro 2, compliance-based dispute. Yep. Yeah. Somebody in their auntie, sister's grandmother's on the other end of the screen right now asking yep. himself, I know he ain't just talk all that talk like that, and he not going to tell me, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Where do I need to go? Yeah. Who do I need to speak to yeah, in yeah. order to connect the dots to make it happen? I got a bankruptcy that's been sitting on my credit report for four years. A student Ooh. loan that's been sitting on my credit report for eight years. <laughs> I have I have a partridge in a pear tree. I need to get it all on. Yeah, yeah. They looking at you. They looking at you. They say, Mr. Phenomenal. I'm going to look at the camera. They say, Mr. Phenomenal. <laughs> Dion Coopwood. Yep. Mr. Yep. Rolly on the wrist. We're going to talk about that after. <laughs> Mr. Rolly on the wrist. Where do I need to go? What do I need to do yep. to start using compliance-based disputing yep. for my behalf? Or maybe yep. maybe not. Maybe there's someone like you and I who has their own credit repair company. Yep. They've been they've yep. been stuffing the letters in the envelopes yep. And, yep. and going back and forth with the CFPB, the yep. BBB, yeah, yeah, the yeah. ABCDEFGs, all, all of them. All, all, of the, all the ABGs. All of that. And they're like, yo, give me the sauce, yeah. give me the butter, give me the juice. Yeah. They're looking you in your eye. Yeah. Money on the line. For sure. T talk to the people, man. How, sure. how can they how can they make that happen? How can they connect the dots so that they they, they too can start using compliance based disputing on yeah. their own behalf? Well, look, I'm not one to keep nothing from nobody because uh -uh. I, I feel like what's for me is for me. Mm -hmm. And we all have to operate in that mindset because, you know, you never really want to go around. I think, I think it's already bad enough in society today that once people find something that works, they try to keep from keep everybody. They're like, oh, I'm not telling Scarcity nobody. mindset. Yeah, you know, like, oh, man, what's for you for you? If you're going to take care of the people, you're going to always be taken care of. And so for me, I'm just going to spill the tea. I'm going to spill the beans. Come Most on, people man. wouldn't do this. Come on. So me personally, I'm going to just tell you what I personally use. I'm pretty sure that there are other systems out there that you could potentially use. Right. Um, but I was uh, actually introduced to a system called Prodigy Surge. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Prodigy Surge is a system that was built based around consumer laws, the mm -hmm. Fair Credit Reporting Acts, and Metro 2-based compliance. Right. So when you use Prodigy Surge, what it does is, I love this system, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It saves you time, energy, and money. It's a system. System right. stands for saving you time, time energy, energy, and, and money. money. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? So on, when you use this system, all you have to do is upload the report, put the report in there, click the button, I want to attack all negative items. Right. It's going to show all negative items. Right. And then you just put together your letter. It, it automatically puts the letters together for you. All you got to do is hit print. Mm -hmm. And it's over with. That's it. And you, you said the name of the system is I'm familiar with it, but I I, I like to take my time. For sure, yeah. Because I don't want nobody coming in the comments and talking about <laughs> you a liar. I hear this. <laughs> you misspelled this. Yeah. Prodigy 
serve. That's you understand? it. That's Prodigy it. Prodigy serves, you get it going. Now, there's yep. one, I'm familiar with the system. I actually just started messing with it recently. For sure. It's life changing, brother. It's if you, if you need my help, you know I got you, bro. Oh, no, I got talk. I got you. I'll talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's one part about it I do want to talk about. Um, Because yeah. I know when in uh, there's something in there called GAs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. talk a little bit about GAs because they yeah. might sign up for Prodigy Surge and be like, well, what's this red thing here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, how, how am I, I can't send out no, yeah. no, 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 no yeah. Metro 2, if I, no, no compliance space if I ain't got no GAs. For talk sure. a little bit about that as well. Yep, gotcha. Yeah, so GAs are, are uh, abbreviation for general attacks. Mm -hmm. And so uh, each round of letters, so if you're going to send a round of letters to, let's just say, trans unit experience and equal facts, then that is going to cost you one GA. Okay. And so when you talk about a journal attack, it's just an attack letters. That's all. So the GAs do have a cost. Um, I don't really want to put pricing out there like that because it does fluctuate and it does change. Right. Uh, because the owner of the system, he he changes it. He does. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. as, as however he feels. And so, right. uh, but it's not, it's very cost efficient. I'll say that. Hella cost efficient. Um, I, well, I'll say this. I'll tell you the price right now, but don't hold me to it if it ever change. Right. right now, each GA is only 15 bucks. Right. So we're talking about most of the time when I'm servicing a client, I could probably go two, maybe three rounds. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got to think, like, depending on what you're charging the client versus what it's going to cost you to actually go three rounds. We're talking about maybe 45 bucks. Right. Maybe another five bucks or so with mailing and printing and using paper. Right. So we're talking about 50 bucks. Right. So let's just say if a person was charging five hundred dollars for their credit repair services, mm -hmm. that's a four hundred fifty dollars surplus, and mm -hmm. you get it done just like that. Right. And there's one part of the the because I'm learning about it myself. I, yep. I don't know if I got it like you got it, but I'm learning about it myself. I what got is, it, bro. Come on, come on. The bro. reason why I got it is because I'm a part of the leadership team. Like they, right, right, right. You know, you know so they kind of got me. I'm not all the way deeply involved because right. I got so much going on, but right. I I am part of that. Hey, right. can you help train right. some people every so often? Right, kind right. of deal like that. So yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the dope things about using using uh, Metro Two and using the Prodigy system, which is makes it super time efficient, is that in the fact that you know usually when you're doing factual consumer law, you got to wait every thirty five days before you can send out another letter, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But you know the way that I know the way that it's set up, you don't have to wait for them to respond back. You can do up to four, I think two, three or four months of disputes altogether, mm -hmm. right? And then just have them lock loaded, ready to go. Yep. That way, by the time the thirty th the thirty days, thirty five days come up, you already got. R round two, round three, round four ready. So you can you mean you can basically do up to four round, actually up to as many rounds as you want for a client, yep. and be done with them for good. Yep. And then you on to the next one. Yep. You understand? Yep. It, it's absolutely it's crazy. It's game changing. It's crazy. Like I, that, that's what I tell like my company, my team. I say, look, I'm gonna use the same report mm -hmm. for this first four rounds. Right. And I'm just going to hit it because, and I, and a, another reason why I do that is because not only is it saving us time. Mm -hmm. But it is also allow it's saving me the the ability of looking bad to the client because we know that some items come back. Right, right, right. So if I'm going to attack the same items that we started with, mm -hmm. and I'm going to attack them all four rounds, mm -hmm. then my, the the probability of an item coming back is 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 none. Right, it's, right. Because right. I'm, I'm just attacking, keep right, attacking. Right. right. There's one more question I want to ask you about Prodigy before we go into the next one because I know yep. that people people going we might have to end up doing a part two to this. Like I'm, that, I'm listen, cool with it. I'm cool with it. Now. The can we product. can we do it somewhere warm? Of course, Jesus. Listen, we go to we, we we go to Miami if we need it. <laughs> Let's go to Miami, Let's do it, Texas, bro. wherever. It needs Let's be. do it, bro. <laughs> because so many people are gonna you know start doing their Google searches and looking into that's it. Cool. One thing that's very different from Prodigy than a lot of things you know when it comes to like consumer and factual based disputing, Prodigy is a little bit different because it's not really disputes. You're doing what they're called like you said attacks, attacks. You're right? Attacking, yeah. Now. Once people start familiarizing with the system, they're going to see all these weird letters. They're going to see oh, TSW1. Oh, yeah. They're going to see PALS, PEL, AAPLS, you know, ACLP, all these different letters. Can you talk a little bit about that? And also, you know, once they familiarize themselves with that, one thing they're going to ask themselves is, well, which one do I send first? Which one do I send for the second round? That's a good question. That's a good question. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So when you go into the system, you start and you get ready to try to put together your letters. You're gonna have to use what's called an attack, right? And so there is multiple different attacks. You have tree shaking wave. Mm -hmm. You got NAAA. You got pals. You got peel. Say it again. Slow it down. Say it again, brother. Slow it down. I'm, I don't want. I don't want nobody saying in here nothing. Right. Right. Say right, it right, again. Right. Slow it down. All right. So I'm gonna just kind of name just like the five that I know. Talking. You got tree shaking wave. TSW. TSW. Right. You got WWRD. What will Rodney, Rodney do? do? Yep. You got peel. Mm -hmm. You got NAAA. Mm -hmm. And you got pals. Mm -hmm. So. You got all these different options. And so the difference between, I'm in that table, but the difference Sorry. between each letter is they get more and more aggressive mm -hmm. because what ended up happening is 
I, let me give you an example. Like with Tree Shaking Wave, you can uh, you are you say can it slow, brother. Say it slow. Tree Shaking Wave. Uh huh. Break T-S-W, it down slow. Yeah, break it slow. Go ahead. You can attack up to 150 inquiries and 150 accounts all at one time. Okay. So you know how you know when you get into industry, they say, well, you can only attack five accounts, and that's like, what I was taught. Man, listen, no. <laughs> with Metro Two, you right. can do your thing. Right. So the way that the system is put together is. When you go to select which attack you want to do, it's going to tell you, hey, with this attack, you can only attack this many inquiries, this many accounts. Have you ever seen that little bar right, in the middle? Right. It'll tell you. So when you're going through, you say, okay, cool. The reason why it's put together that way is because as you go further and deeper down into attacking, it's getting more aggressive, which means mm-hmm. that it's now it's saying, hey, you go on it. Well, let's attack lesser accounts. Mm-hmm. But then what we're going to do is we're going to break these accounts up and send separate letters. Mm-hmm. So you, with a tree shaking wave, TSW, mm-hmm. you could attack, let's just say, if the client got 40 negative accounts, you could attack all 40 negative accounts one at one time. Right. And it's going to go just three different letters to each bureau, right? Mm-hmm. But let's just say you go, you do a, let's just say, a PALS. That's my favorite. That, I that, love PALS. That PALS is strong. It's Woo! crazy. So let's just say with PALS, if you got the same 40 accounts, mm-hmm. that thing, gonna, it may break it down into, let's just say, Shoot, 35 different letters. Right. Because it's going to say, all right, cool, we're going to attack all of these, mm-hmm. but we're going to break it down. So mm-hmm. now the credit bureaus, instead of them getting three envelopes, they're going to get like 40 envelopes. Yeah, it gets crazy. It gets it, crazy. It gets crazy. But what it, the difference is, is you're going to have efficiency versus cost. Mm-hmm. So you got to kind of decide, do you want to be effective? Mm-hmm. Because you know, say you're not worried about cost, or do you want to worry about cost, and you're not really worried about being effective? So you got to look at your client's credit profile mm-hmm. and determine how aggressive you want to be, mm-hmm. or do you want to be lenient? Now, I, it don't matter what where the client is at for me. I'm always start with tree shake away, unless they have a bankruptcy. Mm, okay, okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I so I kind of maneuver differently if they have a bankruptcy, right. you know, because that's just a whole different animal, a whole different beast. Right. But just to kind of see what's going on. Tree shaking wave, and then to shake that thing up. Shake, and that's what it's called. Tree shaking wave. We shake just gonna that shake up. that thing shake up. That, shake that thing see up. See what's gonna fall off, and it's crazy. Tree right. shaking wave. That Listen. thing be shaking everything off. We 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 not even at the halfway mark yet. This nope. man is. Oh my god, nope. it's crazy. You not, not playing fair, brother. No, nah. you not playing fair. Enough. I didn't think I should. Listen, I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. But look, right. So now watch this. You you just taught them a little bit about compliance disputing. They, sure. t- they take the back if they smart enough, and I know they are. They're gonna yeah. take the background with it. Boom, get the compliance dispute going. Yeah. What now took them three, four, five years to dispute and not get off? Compliance made it happen like this. For sure. But now watch this. Their credit report is clean. Yep. I'm new to credit. All right, I just fixed my credit. I'm starting from scratch now though. I got to start building that thing up. Yeah. So I can really start make, run running the plays. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If I'm watching this, right? Let, now let, let's let's get into building credit, right? Yeah, yeah. Because there are a lot of people out here who are watching it who either have little to no credit at all or they got a 700 credit score but their profile is weak yeah, and yeah, can't yeah. really do nothing with it. Yeah. Right? We yeah. talking about all this fancy stuff with Metro 2 but we can never avoid the fundamentals. You got sure. you got you got to get into that. So, For sure. can we talk a little bit about um how how the the structuring and the building out of a credit profile, how we can get our credit profile, whether we just finished cleaning up our credit report, yeah. right? And we need to start from scratch or if we have little to no credit at all, and we're starting from scratch. How can we build out our profile to get our personal credit as strong as it needs to be so we can start running some of these plays? Gotcha. So we, you essentially say, hey, what does a credit profile need to look like? So Facts. whether you just want to go get a house, car, business credit, anything, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. First thing I want to tell everybody is this is just how I feel. And I think that anybody that's in the credit industry will feel the exact same way. Stop falling in love with score. Mm, say that again. Stop, I, I, stop I say that falling in love with score. Say it one more time. Stop falling in love with score. Come on. Brother. Like I have I have clients with 650s that's in a better position than clients with 720s. Come on, man. And it's because, like you said, the 720 profile, terrible, terribly weak, thin. Got you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got brother, no accounts. Come on, brother. 680, 40, 40 plus accounts. Yep. Five, six of them paid off. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so he gonna get approved for everything, you get approved for nothing. Right. You know, so just people have to stop falling like me. I don't I don't have an 800. Pl- I, I know the game. Right. I got a 790. I don't have an 850. That's right. the max score. Right. I don't have it. I got a pretty good score, but I'm not beating myself up saying I got to have an 800. This is what I tell all my clients. I say, listen, when you're looking at score, just make sure you sit around a 6A. Th- these are my recommendations. Don't don't say this guy is wrong. Right. Or, this is, I'm telling you my recommendations in order if you want to go get a, a house, car, business credit, all of that. 680 plus is what the score need to be. Mm-hmm. 680. So if you had a 680 plus, you're in a very good position. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not saying that you're in a bad position if you're at a 650, you still got a good score. But if you talk about you want to get to the point to where you're undeniable for transactions, mm -hmm. 680 plus, um, payment history need to be at 100%. Mm -hmm. So if you got some issues with payment history, you need to get get that Metro 2 mm -hmm. and get them payment histories, you know, get them late payments removed. Mm -hmm. um, second thing is we want to talk about credit utilization. Mm. Keep your utilization underneath 10%. Right. It's got to be underneath 10%. Right. No, nobody wants to loan you money and say, hey, all of the lines of credit that you have are maxed, maxed out. out. Right. That's crazy. And it's the same thing with payment history. Nobody wants to see that you can't make payments on time. Fact. That doesn't, you would, I, I mean, come on. Like, if I, if you know I got missed payments, you're not going to loan me the no money. No, no, you ain't getting a dime. You ain't getting a dollar. People have to, yeah. you have to position yourself like the bank. Like, think about like right. the bank. So if you're the bank, would you loan somebody with missed payments money? No. Right. If you, if, if you say, hey. You got hundred thousand dollars in available credit, but you use ninety thousand. I'm not loaning you a dollar. You you're probably yeah. not gonna pay me back. Yeah, yeah I'll slap box you. I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not gonna yeah, <laughs> see what I'm saying. On. So those two, those right there, those two metrics equate for sixty five percent of your score. So right. those are the two most important. You get right. like you can't screw those up. Right. So if utilization is bad, don't carry the debt. Pay it off. Like you can have a seven hundred, brother, mm -hmm. and if your utilization is over fifty percent, you get declined for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you get approved. Mm -hmm. And everybody know that they know that this is true if you watch it. If you get approved for something and you over 700, it's a very low limit. Yep. They like, okay, well, we give you a we give you three thousand dollar limit. Right. Damn, what I'm gonna do with three? You gotta understand, your your utilization is too high. Right, 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 you, right. You are a liability at this point, right? right. So that's utilization. Then we got credit age, which is a, which is another metric. Credit age need to be three years plus. Right. So th this, when you think about the psychology behind why does my credit age really matter? It's like, well, okay, well, if you're 30 and you only been handling credit for six months, they're like, well, you haven't had enough time in the game. Like, right. we don't know if you're going to handle us well. So they're looking at how long have you been handling credit, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you got at least three years plus of credit age. Um, and we can talk about some stuff that can help fix oh, all we, these we, metrics we, we, too, We're right? going to talk about that, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, that's, that second to last metric is going to be... Um, I'm drawing a blank, man. I know I got uh, credit age. Oh, util utilization. You util nope, not utilization. My last metric is going to be inquiries. Yeah. So this is a this is a big one. <laughs> you, you had to take them off because you fixed credit. So you've seen what I've seen. You've seen sixty inquiries on one credit report, brother. You've seen someone pull a pull a credit with Chase eighty times. Sixty. I've seen two hundred. <laughs> <'Cause laughs> I, I might just I might just stop the video right See now. What I'm saying? Now, now I've seen two hundred because you know it's a trend. Everybody's doing Turo, mm -hmm. so when you're doing Turo, you know you got to go get your right. If you well, if you're not doing it the right way, right, and you're not maximizing on some stuff, mm -hmm. we're gonna get into later. But if you're going out there to every dealership and you you just get into Turo, you say, well, I'm gonna get thirty cars, mm -hmm. and you go into all of these different banks in the thirty day time frame before they all report, and you go mm -hmm. different colors, different colors, different colors. Now you got two hundred inquiries. Inquiries is uh, it's the biggest piece because it's kind of like there. Okay, all of the banks have classifications mm -hmm. and they have specific departments that look at inquiries. And inquiries they have something that's called bank seeking. I ain't know about it. Say that again. What's that? Bank seeking. Talk talk. Say, say, break that down. Break bank that down. seeking. That means that it's a person that has been doing a lot of applications in regards to lines of credit. Mm -hmm. And so when they look at that, each each company has what's called a, a, a CBO. Mm -hmm. a, I'm getting too deep. Nah, man, I, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. Go, 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 go ahead, brother. <laughs> go ahead. Each, each, each bank and lenders have what's called a credit bust out team. It's crazy, right? And so, it's a specific <laughs> department that. <laughs> what you, what you came on here to do, man? I came on here to just. God, I didn't need me to cut you off. Go ahead, CBO, 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 CBO. Go ahead, go, go. So go, go, this go. team is sitting there when you apply. They looking at your application, saying. How many banks in the last 24 months did this man apply to? Mm. And if we give him a line of credit, the likelihood of him repaying us back is probably not likely because what we're looking at is somebody that's... Because lines of credit and stuff like that, majority of them are unsecure lines of credit. Mm -hmm. So we get a credit card, that's unsecure. Mm -hmm. There's no way for them to get that money back. Zero. There's no collateral. Right. Zero. Right, 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 right. You go and get a house, your house collateral. You go and get a car, your car's collateral. You go get a credit card, that's an unsecure line of credit. Right. The likelihood of you paying that back, they already know that it's unlikely. But if now if you were just applying for stuff, you're a liability. Right. So you can have a 700. If you got 40 inquiries in the last two years because inquiries stay for 24 months, right. you're not getting approved. Yeah, get out of here. It's a decline. Right, right, right. 
It's the same thing. Think about, think like a bank. Hey, if somebody came to you and you was able to look at them and say, man, you just would ask 40 other people for $20. Right. Oh, man. Right. I'm the 41st person you asked for $20? Yeah, you're sick. You're probably not going to pay me my $20. Yeah, man. you're mentally ill. That's what Something it is. Something wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah, you're sick. That's it. Get that one out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. So, yeah, so that's, you know, when people look at their credit profile, that's that's the way it needs to be structured. Like, right. Those metrics have to be in place. So when you look at increase, you got to have less than five increases in a 24-month time frame. Facts. Got to have less than five. If you want to be... If you want to put yourself in a position where no matter where you go, all those metrics have to be in place, you say, they're going to say, approve. Mm -hmm. And what what do you want? How many do you want? And where you want to send it to? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's that's how the profile needs to look. Boom. One, two, that's three. That's it. One, man. two, three. That's it. Man. That's man. it. Man. Man. We, we just... I might just sleep in the studio tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's I might just sleep in the studio tonight <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm getting everything he got. I'm yeah, getting everything sure. he got. Let's, let's go. All right, so now... That's how the the credit report has to get has to be properly structured, right? Yeah, so for sure. you had made mention about when you when you talked about like age, uh, we, we were talking about like age and different things like that. Yeah. What are some different things people could do to start building their profile out? Yep, yep. So you can either um you can do a secure loan on yourself, which you can go to your bank and say, hey, I'm gonna put this two thousand dollars in this savings account. Right. I want to borrow a loan against my own money. You can do that, and right. it'll show up on your credit profile as if you borrowed a loan, and they'll say, hey, pay yourself back, and then. Put a little interest on it, and they'll take a little bit of interest. So maybe two thousand. They may say, "All right, cool. We want to make a hundred dollars off of this two thousand. Mm -hmm. So you end up paying back, let's just say two thousand one hundred dollars. But it looks on your credit profile like you got a positive loan, and that helps you build credit too, right? So that's that's one way. Um, another way is you can uh, add what's called primary accounts. You familiar with primary accounts? Right? Oh, of course. Yeah. So primary accounts, they can add those, which is accounts that you have ownership of, and, right. they, and not. Not necessarily, um, I mean, it, 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 it's a form of, let's just say, you can go to Capital One, Discover, you get your, these accounts that you own, mm -hmm. but then there are some secondary primary accounts that you can get as well mm -hmm. that we get into if you want to, but you want to add primary accounts, which is you have the, you're the sole owner of that account, mm -hmm. and you have the ability to spend or not spend the money that you have available, but you have the ownership of that account, which is just like a line of credit, or you can do what's called trade lines, which mm -hmm. is essentially piggybacking off of somebody else's credit profile. So let's just say, um, like like I was saying about my Capital One, 19 years of history, $10,000 limit, uh, no late payments ever. Mm -hmm. If we add that onto your credit profile, your score going to shoot up just like that because right. trade lines are positively affected four out of five of your credit metrics. Mm -hmm. So now you got, t you know, 19 years of payment history. Mm -hmm. Boom. So now that, that, that shoots it up. If you ever had any issues there, that shoots that up. Utilization goes down because you just added ten thousand dollars more lines of credit, right? Mm -hmm. Credit age go up nineteen years. That's crazy. Crazy. I just added nineteen years of history on your credit in, profile in a blink of an eye. You see what I'm saying? You understand? And then I added another account right. to your account mix. That was the other metric too. Yeah, account account. There mix. you go. Yeah, mix of accounts. Yeah, 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 mix of accounts. So, like, man, I just added another account to your account mix. Are you kidding me? Right. So. Now your credit profile is beefed up so where you may have had a 600 mm -hmm. and had a thin profile. Nothing was there. You had a trade line with all those years of history mm -hmm. and its limit. Mm -hmm. And now you went from a 600 to a 720 mm -hmm. just like that. Crazy. And now you go, you get your house, you get your car, hmm. you set up. Tricky. You set up. Look, man. So so you mean to tell me? Yes, I do. <laughs> Before you ask. Before you even ask. <laughs> Before I even ask. This is how important credit is. People don't understand this stuff. And at one point in time, it was just a piece of plastic for gas and emergencies. Oh, you wow. understand? We was wow. we was fooled, tricked, hoodwinked, bamboozled, let wow. a muck, ran amok, let astray. Wow. Now look. Wow. We out here. Man, get into it to get through it. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Look, so you taught us how to repair our credit through yep. compliance-based disputing. Yep. 99% of people don't even know what that is. Yeah. You taught us how to properly format what a, how to properly structure our credit report, moreover, how different ways that we could go about building it out, right? Yep, yep. So we fixed the credit, we built it out. Now, now let's have a little bit of fun, because I told you, I did, I did my research on you, brother. Talk to me, come I on. did my due diligence, brother. Talk to me. I, I know what you be teaching. I know what you be talking about. Let's, let's do it. Let's talk a little bit about something called manufactured spending. Yeah. Let's get into it, because I know, I know, I do my research. That's heavy. Oh, no, 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 I know you about to talk that talk. I know, I know you about to talk that talk. Let's talk about it, right? Yeah. There's somebody watching this, and he's scratching their head, be like, there's more, ladies and gentlemen, you, we just getting started. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about manufactured spending. So for those that don't know, talk a little bit about what manufactured spending is and how it works. Yeah. Um, the fundamentals of manufactured spending is, um, how do I want to put this, man? Take uh, your time, brother. Breathe. <laughs> we here. I heat up some coffee if you need me to. Like, 
this is this right here. This is the one that's going probably uh, it's it's going it's going it's going to met. some people ain't gonna be able to sleep tonight after watching this episode. Okay. Um, but manufactured spending is a way of essentially turning credit into cash mm. without any without spending a dollar. Mm. Did that? Did that? Say did it that again. Say it. Say it. again. Say it again. Okay. Say it again. Okay. I'm gonna throw these headphones. Right. I'm gonna throw these headphones. <laughs> say it again. Manufactured spending is. Go ahead. It's it, it is the method of turning credit. Credit card spend into cash without spending a dollar. That's it. That's manufactured spending. That sounds like wizardry. Yeah. It, magic, break, trickery, it all, it's all of that. Break it down. Break it down. Bet. All right. So give you an example. Uh, I'm going to use myself for example. So right now, and I'm not going to talk about business credit. I'm just talking about personal credit. Mm -hmm. With personal credit, I got a quarter million dollars that I can spend at any given time, right? You add up all my credit cards, right? You with me? I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, might, I almost fainted when I heard the number, but I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. All right, cool. So now check this out. I manufacture spend. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from, these are this is this is real stuff. Right. So let's just say I, I manufacture spend a quarter million dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Easily as possible. Mm -hmm. And I and I teach how to do all of this mm -hmm. stuff in mm -hmm. my program, right? Mm -hmm. So if I manufacture if I manufacture spend a quarter million dollars a week, that's mm -hmm. a million dollars a month that I've spent without really spending it, right? Right. This is real stuff. I'm not making this up. Breathe, brother, breathe. On average, credit card companies are giving back 2% cash back on every dollar that you spend. Facts. I see where you're going. I'm about to cry, but you can go ahead. So, what's 2% of a million dollars? What's that? 20,000? 200,000? 20,000. 20,000? That's $20,000 for free a month. That's $240,000 in cash that you ain't got to work for. So, that, now, now, this, now, let's check this out. Mm -hmm. It's people watching this with damn good credit. Mm-hmm. They, they don't know what to do. They sit on the gold, man. And they don't even know it. Don't even know it. Two percent cash back, one and a half percent cash back. They don't even. They playing. They think it's a joke, a game, a gimmick. Fifteen to twenty thousand just is it's available for you. So now, what does that fifteen to twenty thousand dollars do for you? Mm -hmm. Like today, I took my flight here. It was free. Mm. Me and you were just. I just. I just booked it, like, yeah, yeah. And then I booked the road flight, and yeah. then I rebooked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was with points. It was free. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't like to, I don't like to pocket watch, but this man is very wealthy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew he was wealthy. I was like, he lives in Chicago. We talked as well. I was like, hey, you want to do interviews? Like, yeah, I'll fly it right now. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'll yeah. fly it right now. Nah, for Hopped real. on a flight, and, and now we here. I didn't. I don't know how he did it. I, I just, I, I, I don't know. Hey, man, I run a play with no delay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Gracious. And that's all off manufactured spending. For sure. Yep. So. Good. You know, you just, you, it, it puts you in a situation to where, you know, you can really live the lifestyle you deserve. Right. Like, just a matter so, of bridging the gap between the information. That's it. Information change your situation. So you right. just got to get in the right room to get that information. And so now everybody said, well, okay, so how do I do this manufacturer spend? Like, okay, I got the credit cards. What do I do? You just don't get any credit card. The first thing you have to do is if you have good credit and you want to get credit cards, you only need to apply for cards that's going to give you cash back and rewards. Right. You, like like my Discover It, they give me 2% cash back on everything, and then some months they run promotions where they'll double it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting 4%, sometimes 5%, depending on right. what money it is and what promotions they're running, right? Right. Uh, my Navy Federal Green Go Rewards card, 2% mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just you have to apply for cards that's only going to give you cash back and rewards because the reality is this. When I think manufacturers spending, the first concept that I tell everybody is you have to – you have to change your mindset on your spending habits and how you spend. What I mean by that is, is put the debit cards down. Mm -hmm. Are you wasting your time with those? The debit cards are not building you any cash. Right. Like, like you're not getting any cash back. Mm -hmm. You're not building any credit. Right. And then if you lose your debit card, who going to give your money back? Right. The bank going to say, well, okay, you lost your debit card. Uh, we'll see you new in the mail and we're going to do a 30 day investigation. Right. I thought my money was protected by the FDIC. Mm, yeah, they lied. You see what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, they lied. Like that's crazy. Right, right, right. So now I got my mortgage due, I got and I'm sitting up here waiting on my money. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work, people. So, if you get the credit cards and you use those for your daily everyday spending habits, which is considered organic spend in the mm -hmm. manufactured spending world, mm -hmm. you can use those cards for everyday spend and you're going to build credit. Mm -hmm. You're going to get cash back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then your money is protected because you're just going to take the money in the bank and pay the card back for the organic spend that you use, right? Mm -hmm. But if you use that, if you lose that credit card, then guess what they're going to do? They're going to say, all right, cool. We'll send your card in the mail, Mr. Coopwood, and we're going to reverse all those charges. <laughs> That's crazy, right? So, so tell me, why again am I using a debit card? I don't, 
Yeah, just we can cut them things up. Throw cut them to up. the side. I don't, I don't walk around with them. I don't need it for nothing. I, right. I don't. Like, I, got a, I keep about my top seven or eight credit cards in my wallet, and I'm rolling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just the idea of it. But if you're going to manufacture spend, you can't manufacture spend without getting any rewards and any cash back. It doesn't make sense. Are there any sp- cards in particular? Because you, you mentioned Discovery. Are there any other cards that you recommend that people look into as well? Yeah. Um, my top go-to cards is, is Chase and Amex. Yeah, those are definitely. Yeah, Chase yeah, yeah. and Amex going to give you the uh, best cash back and reward possibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, Chase Sapphire, um, Chase Freedom, mm-hmm. Chase Slate. Those are good. Um, Amex Platinum, Amex Gold. Um, I got the. Uh, I also got the uh, Amex Hilton Honors. Ooh, mm-hmm. Love that one. Yeah, that, that, was, that one's a game changer. Delta game changer. Amex Delta Sky Miles. Mm-hmm. So we talking about. This is how I got my flight for free. This is how I got my hotel stay for free. Right. Um, you know, just using those cash back and reward points because a lot of a lot of these companies too is if you guys see a lot of companies, they'll say, Well, if you apply for a card today, you get approved, we're gonna give you uh a hundred like Hilton Honors was like, we'll give you hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, hundred hundred and fifty thousand points in mm-hmm. hotel points, right? Right. So that hundred and fifty thousand dollars equates into fifteen hundred dollars in hotel stay. Mm-hmm. So if a hotel room is let's just say three hundred bucks, just Think about how many nights you just got for free by just getting approved for that card. You see what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. And then if you manufacture, spend it. Oh, it's over. See Ball what I'm game. saying? Ball Same game. thing with the Delta Sky Miles. They gave me 90,000 points. My flight here today was like 34,000 points or something like that, round trip. Mm-hmm. So then if you think about that, that's three free round trips basically anywhere just for getting that card. And then they say, well, if you spend X amount of many dollars in the first 90 days, we're going to give you these points. So Delta Sky Miles ahead and Honor said, well, if you spend $3,000 in the first 90 days, we're going to give you these points. Mm-hmm. I just went out and just manufactured spent mm-hmm. and got the points. Mm-hmm. I didn't spend a dollar, but I got the benefits of it, right? You see what I'm saying? Right. So I didn't spend no money, but to the credit card company, it looked like I spent money. And then what they did was they gave me the rewards and the cash back incentives that then I ended up turning into using it like it was just cash. Right. Right. So those are the cards that I would recommend. And uh, there is a few different processes that I teach on. It, it's it's a little lengthy. We don't have to go into it, but there are some methods that you can, you know, put in place in order to properly manufacture spend without any crazy red flags. In mm-hmm. order to literally consistently do this on a day to day, a week to week, and a month to month basis to generate cash for yourself, just like that. Love it. And this is stuff that I teach. So, right. you know, oh, we gonna get into all of that. Yeah, we are gonna get into all of that. So, look, you 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 taught us how to fix credit. Yep. Structure credit for sure. Build credit. Yep. Now we get into leveraging credit, mm-hmm. which is a whole, th- which is the, th- this is why you get credit in the first place. You don't get it just to look, just to have the score and have the card in your pocket. No, yep. you get it to leverage it yep. for whatever financial goals or personal goals or business goals yep. that you have. Yep. Right. Yeah. So let's get deeper into that because, you know, like we talked about, there are people walking around with 750s and 800s yep. who have the built out profiles, who have the strong uh, credit profiles, but they're not doing nothing with it. Yeah. It's just, it's just for show. I got yeah. an 800 credit score and then they're going to sleep at night and that's it. No, 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 no. You got to run the play. Yeah. You, you got to run the play, With right? No delay. And, and like I said, I did my research. I, I, I did my due diligence. And you talked a little bit about it in the in the opening a segment of the sit down. Mm-hmm. And I would love for you to go more into it because you talked about how you went from working at a six-figure job, a comfortable mm-hmm. six-figure job, using your words, a comfortable six-figure job. For sure, yeah. To now leveraging your own credit to put you in a situation where you went from working at that job to segueing into entrepreneurship yeah. and being able to start multiple businesses and scaling those businesses. Talk a little bit about that, the story behind that, if you don't mind getting a little bit more detail as it pertains to that. Because there's somebody watching this who has great credit, yeah. who has the profile, yeah. but they, they're they not able to, they just, they're missing the information to put those pieces together to leverage it and take their life to the next level. So yeah. talk about your story a little bit as it pertains to that. Yeah, um, man, the first thing I want to say before I dab into that story is that if you have good credit, it's okay to mess up and, okay. me- and mess it up. Okay. Be- because I messed my credit up at one point and um, it's okay because you can always fix it. Right. It's like, it's like, man, it's like for a woman, it's like cutting your hair off and feeling like, <laughs> dang, I just cut my hair off. It's going to grow back. Yeah. It's like for a guy, if you get a bad haircut, bro. I'm gonna slap my barber, buddy. Yeah, yeah but you, but you gonna yeah. be able to. You can fix it. You know, yeah. like it's, it's fixable. Credit is fixable. But if you never take a chance, you'll never really know. So for me, you know, like I was really like, bro. I worked at Sprint for seven years. My first real job and only job. I worked at Sprint for seven years out of college, and uh, there I was making like maybe one oh five or something like that. Worked like four days a week. Right? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Like I was super comfortable. Um, I was the number one store manager in the nation for like three years straight, bro. Crazy. Like killing them. Right. 
And uh, I left there and I went to T-Mobile uh, because they would promote me to district manager. Mm -hmm. And so T-Mobile was like, well, we'll give you a district manager position. And we'll pay you more money. Mm -hmm. I just really wanted to grow. I didn't care about the money, but T-Mobile ended up paying me like 130 And I went there. And mad you, bro, think about this. This is what I needed people to pay attention to. We talking about six years ago. Mm -hmm. We talking about six years ago, I was making 130 mm -hmm. And six years ago, making 130 I decided that if I could make 130 for you. Mm -hmm. Talk that talk. Come on, man. Finish the sentence, man. Like, if I if you pay me 130 mm -hmm. how much am I making you? Mm -hmm. So if, if I could make 130 on this job, I know I could make 130 plus. I got to be worth at least a million. Because mm -hmm. if I, if, if y'all paying me 130 y'all not giving me half of the pie. No, that's a fact. You're not giving me a quarter of the pie. Millionaires don't pay millionaires. Come on. Come on now. So I said, dang, y'all could afford to pay me 130 I'm doing this good of a job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nah, this ain't going to be for me. Like, I got to figure this out for myself. You right. know? And so I knew that I had good credit. Mm -hmm. I knew that I could carry myself. And I said, even if I max out these cars, I got good credit. I could just apply for some more cars and just keep floating in this how I figure this thing out. And so that was the decision that I made mm -hmm. um, back in, I think it was 2016, to, I just like, nah, like, I'm just going to figure this out for myself. And at that time, what was crazy was I went into entrepreneurship, and when I went to entrepreneurship, I was selling life insurance. Mm. Hardest thing ever. I'm yes, talking about the yeah. most unsexy product you could <laughs> you could have picked. I went into an industry that I didn't know nothing about. Right. Um, but I really didn't care. I was just like, I just didn't, I just knew that a job was no longer for me. And so I, I did that. And I did that for a few years, man. And um I figured it out. I, I didn't make no money for like the first three to four months. Mm -hmm. And I was and I was good because I was floating my credit. Mm -hmm. Uh but like my first 10 months there, I made like 110 grand. It's about door to door, like, hey, you want some insurance? Slam door, like. Treat me like I'm straight Jehovah's Witness. Something crazy, like just beat me up, like. But at, but at the end of the day, I like I, I have a different type of mentality. Like I'm going, it's me. I'm either going to win or I'm going to win. Like I don't, I don't, like I don't know about no failure. I don't know nothing about none of that, bro. Like right. that's not a part of my deal. Right. I'm not made up that way. Anybody that's associated, that's around me, we're going to win. There you go. Like the top is where we going. You know. Easy. So I took credit, man, and I, I took a chance on myself with credit, and uh, it, it it paid off for me. And I end up messing up my credit, though, because I end up having this success in wanting to purchase a home. I end up purchasing a, a new home two years ago, got a house built from the ground up. And in that process, I had so much going on, I end up missing two payments on my Discover It card. Yeesh. Okay. So a missed payment, man, dropped me like 100 some points. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about we going from like 720 to like down to like, it was like, it was more than that. It was actually like 580. Mm -hmm. But... Oh. But in that process, um, oh. I end up starting another company in the midst of a pandemic. I end up starting, so I went out of insurance, mm -hmm. and I started my solar renewable energy company, Phenomenal Power, right? Oh. So I started that solar company in the midst of a pandemic, and we did, we did millions in that company. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we end up finding is after having success with that company, being in the Midwest with it snowing and the bad weather conditions, business operations just wasn't really conducive. And right. so that ended up slowing down. And uh, we just end up shifting and segueing everything operationally to the West Coast. But in, inside of that, we realized that there was an opportunity where clients, in order to go solar, they need to have a 650 credit score. Mm. See what I'm saying? Mm. So okay. it, inside of that, I said, well, this is another opportunity for me to start another company. Right. So I started my company, which was Precise Credit, in order to help assist these clients that needed to have a better credit score to go solar so mm -hmm. I could catch that bag. So I'm like, I'm going to catch this bag, catch that bag. Mm -hmm. And the process of understand that operationally sound that solar wasn't good for the Midwest. We ended up fading that to the West Coast, but then like the so like the credit company ended up just taking over anyway. It just mm -hmm. it just with, with a man of his own, clients were just coming out of nowhere. It was like mm -hmm. it was so crazy. And uh it just kind of like spiraled out of control in a good way. Mm -hmm. And uh that's how I'm here today in regards to talking about credit because It was just kind of like organically, everything just started to shift. Everything right. started to shift. Everything started to shift. And then as I really kind of, because I already knew credit, I was already like really very fundamentally sound with credit right. in the process of it. It just, I said, you know what, now I need to go ahead and start a company. Maybe this is a calling for me to start a company. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I said, well, might as well fix my credit too. Wonderful. And then look, like five, six months later, here I'm back, I'm back damn near 800. You know what I'm saying? Like 800, like right, right back in the game. Like right. I wasn't just down, but... People need to be okay with taking a good credit mm -hmm. and leveraging it and, and decide to go ahead and start that business. Right. Go ahead and get that, you know, that business credit, that business funding. Go ahead and get them lines of credit so mm -hmm. that way you can go ahead and 
start your business and do what actually really makes you happy because mm -hmm. if you feel like the job ain't for you and you got that feeling of you want more, mm -hmm. like I had that feeling, I was like, I want more. I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't content. I did something about it. Mm -hmm. I just want to encourage everybody to do something about it too. Come on now, brother. That's it. Listen. Listen, Listen, come on, man. I'd, I'd flip this table if I could. <laughs> Hell of a story, I'll help man. you flip it. Hey, come on now. What, what <laughs> you, and they just toss that thing over. But now look, right? First off, incredible story. Mm, appreciate it. And you. it really just comes back to what you said, just betting on yourself and yeah. wanting more and understanding yeah. that you deserve more, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Like when we talk about mindset and those things, there's somebody that's working, also working a job at a, at a T-Mobile, also yeah, working a job yeah. at a supermarket or at For just sure. some dead-end spot where, you know, they make, they, they're doing okay, but they know that something's missing. Yeah. And you had that same feeling. You was at that same point, and it yep. just took you having a confidence within yourself, betting yep. on yourself, and ultimately that bet paid off because now look, fast forward a couple years later, look where you're at now and still growing and yeah. still going, right? Yeah. Yeah. But once again, it came from you bridging the gap between yourself and that information needed to take it to that next step, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So now when we talk about leveraging credit, you may you said it you said it a little sneakily, but I'm going I'm to bring it back because we got we can't, we can't talk about credit and credit repair and all those other things without talking about Business credit. Yeah. Come yeah, on, man. We can yeah. we can we can have a we can have a sit down and not talk about business credit. Yeah. Business credit, like you and I know, everybody loves personal credit, but when you really start understanding the credit game, yeah. the bread and butter is in business credit. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. There's someone who's watching this right now who's working a job by day, building a business by night. They're trying to put the piece together, but they need the information. Maybe they need the funding, whatever they, whatever is necessary in order to take their business from point A to point Z. Yep, yep. They're looking at you. They're looking at you, Mr. Phenomenal. They said, hold on, what, talk, talk to me a little bit more about that business credit thing, yep, right? Yep. Break down, if I'm watching this and if I'm a new entrepreneur, how can I start building on that business credit so I can take this, they can take the same step that you were able to take? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the first misconception that I want to clear up is that you can't, you can't establish real true business credit and get business funding and have success with that to start a business without having good personal credit. That's the first thing because now are there some lenders and are there some options that will allow you to get business credit without you having to have good personal credit? Yes, but those are situations where you may potentially be having to be in a charge cost type of situation where you use the money today, you got to pay it back in 30 days. Mm -hmm. And not new most new business owners are not in that position where – they're going to be able to spend 10 grand today and then in 30 days pay that back. That's not necessarily the case. But what I will say is that's if you want to successfully be able to build out business credit, you need to have a good, solid biz, like personal credit profile. Mm -hmm. And so all of those different metrics that I went over earlier right. and the way they need to be structured, that's the same structure mm -hmm. that need to be in place in regards to your personal credit profile in order to establish good business or business credit right. and to get you know proper funding for your business. And the sexy thing about business credit, I'm going to say it's sexy, it's sexy. The sexiest thing about business credit that I love, and I mean, I'm being honest, like I don't even use my personal credit a whole lot anymore. I'm just being honest because yeah. it helps, it helped me duplicate myself. Right. Whereas now you got Dion over here and then you got his company and other companies over here and they got Fact. business credit. Fact. So now when I operate, I'm operating as the business, like my cars and houses and all of that. To the business name. Mm -hmm. So now they like, okay. So when I want to go buy another house, another car, and they looking at me, they like, well, his debt to income ratio is solid. Like he just got income coming in, no debt. Mm -hmm. Like literally, like I told you, like the lender, I had a lender looking at me like, you don't own any cars? I'm like, no, nah, I don't. Nah. Because yeah. they, they don't you don't see that on my credit profile. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of people, they they are in positions where they maybe want to go get a house. So mm -hmm. if you if you're in a position where you you did it. You did it backwards. You went and got your your dream car, mm -hmm. and that note is five hundred to a thousand dollars a month. Eesh. And now you're trying to go get a house. You did it backwards. Now the lender is telling you your debt to income ratio is too high. You over fifty percent, give or take. What you got to do is you now you got to go put that car in your business name, so that mm -hmm. way you can leverage your personal credit again in order to go ahead and get that house. If that's something that you choose to do, put it in your house. Put the house. You know what I'm saying? Your personal credit name. But right. the reality is that yeah, business credit is. It's the gateway to success because essentially when you go ask a lender for money, if I go right now, if I go say American Express, give Dion a lot of credit, they might say, all right, 780 credit score plus, ah, let's give him 10,000. Right. Cool. If I say, hey, give Phenomenal Power business credit, they might say, mm, been in business for a few years now. Right. Would you like to guarantee that if anything happens to your biz that you're gonna you're gonna support your biz? You're gonna be what's called a PG, a personal guarantor, yes, which is 780. 
I'll say yes. So then they'll say, okay, well, we're going to give your company $50,000 line of credit. One, two. I'm the same person. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that they know that uh, an unsecured line of credit with an individual hands is, has a greater likelihood of defaulting rather than the business. Mm -hmm. Nobody want to mess up no business credit, mm -hmm. but you get a higher line of credit with your business. So now you have more buying power, you mm -hmm. have more leverage. So if you're going to go start a business, you have more funds to be able to go ahead and navigate and maneuver around rather than trying to do everything your person ain't. This get burst out fast. This one here, there's, there's, there's the endless opportunity here. Right. And then let's just say you only got just one LLC. What if you got two? Mm -hmm. What if you got three? What Come if you got now. four? Mm -hmm. So now you got 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000. Come on, man. This thing gets crazy. It gets ridiculous. It gets ridiculous. This is why we say information changes your situation. Mm -hmm. Because if you could get access to this kind of information, you get somebody who can literally give you the roadmap and they've done it before you. Come on. Like, it's different. Right. It's, it's totally different, man. It's absolutely game changing. Now, if someone's watching this, do you have any banks in particular that you would recommend as it pertains to looking into getting that business funding or just getting getting business credit with? Yeah, there are some uh some really solid go tos. Uh, one in particular that I would potentially probably tell, and I'm going to talk to new business owners because seasoned business owners they don't have any issues really getting business credit because. As long as the business has been in, in business over two years right. and they can show, like, let's just say 70 grand plus and going through a business bank account flowing through there, they could potentially get lines of credit. They good. Easy money. But if you're talking about I'm brand new, I just got started, I'm trying to get some business credit established, you can go to Wells Fargo. They, they give you a, a brand new business up to 100K. Yee. No docs. We talking about no documents. All you got to do is apply for the loan, mm -hmm. put your EIN number in there. Mm -hmm. You know, put all your personal information in there, mm -hmm. and they're gonna say, okay, they go, they gonna go off of what's called stated income. You mm -hmm. Tell them what your business is making or projected to make over the next, let's just say, twelve months or so. Mm -hmm. And literally, you're in a position where they're gonna give you the ability to get up to a hundred thousand dollars in business credit and funding. Goodness gracious! That's just that's just one. You Goodness know what I'm saying? Gracious. Like, like Chase will give you Chase will give you a line of credit up to fifty k. Like, I mean, you could. There are options. Mm -hmm. You got you got shoot BBNT, which is uh, into it now, or whatever they call it, SunTrust, into it. They all kind of merged together now. Right, right, right. That's another option. You know, they're giving up 50 to 100K. Right. Um, a quick little easy play is everybody can go to fmbo.com. Mm -hmm. F as a Frank, N as a Nancy, B as a Bob, O as an octopus, fmbo.com. And you can literally hit the business section and you go down to business credit cards and you get your business credit card line of credit. If you had a pretty decent credit profile, let's just say, 620, 650 plus credit score, and your profile is pretty decent, they give you 15K for your business. Mm -hmm. Easy money. Oh, it's oh, easy oh, money. Oh, oh. And this is business credit. Business credit. We're not talking about personal credit, bro. We're no, talking about business credit, bro. It's about business credit, man. Listen. Business credit. I see, I see why they call you Mr. Phenomenal. Oh, I appreciate you. I, I see, I see why they <laughs> I, I see why they call you Mr. Phenomenal, man. You just broke it down an entire credit game down from top to bottom. For brother. sure. We for talked sure. about how to repair credit, how to build credit, yep. properly structure credit, leveraging credit, business credit, business funding, the whole the whole shebang. Yep. Yep. And I want to begin to close this thing out, but before I do, I know, once again, I did my research on you. I did my due diligence. I know how big you are on mindset. Yep. yep. I know how, how big you are on motivation because, yep. like I said before, there is someone who's watching this that was where you once were at once yeah, upon a time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, for that one person, for that two people, for the, for that 100 people, who, however many it may be on the other end of the screen right now watching this, that are looking for some sense of guidance, looking for some yep. sense of understanding, if you had to close this thing out with whether it be a word of wisdom, a word of positivity, a word of motivation for them to kind of get their mind in a place that it needs to be to take the information that we gave them today and run with it and execute it. So that they can go from working at a five figure job to being a six seven figure eight figure business yeah, owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What 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 would you share with them today? A few things, and to be quick, the first thing I would say is uh, be okay auditing your circle. Mm. What's that mean? Um, everybody can't go with you, man. Come on, man. You gonna you gonna have to you gonna have to let some people go. You have to cut some ties. Mm -hmm. um, every relationship is not gonna be able to can't. It just it just it just can't right. you know it's 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 some friends it's some it's some it's some relatives mm -hmm. it's it's some spouses too mm -hmm. that's tough I mean? they they it just if if you know like my thing is this is this is my rule either you with me or you against me and mm -hmm. so 
if I ever get an inclination that you're not with me, that means that you got to be against me. I got to let you go. Got to go. Like everybody has their own time and their own season. Mm -hmm. So that's the very first thing. The second thing is I would say is uh, I would ask everybody, what are you willing to give up to go up? Man, you about to make me throw this mic. You about to make me throw this mic, brother. Come on now. For real. Like, Come on now. Like it's, it's all a sacrificial effort. I mean, I'm talking about when I became an entrepreneur, I made a vow to God. I said, listen, I'm done partying. Mm, I'm done drinking. They don't want to hear that. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done hanging out. Mm -hmm. I'm done kicking it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing. I'm done doing anything other than activities that's going to generate me income. Mm -hmm. If it's not going to generate me income, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm in the crib. You Simple feel like like Simple people always like it's to the point to where now six years in the game, nobody asks me anymore where I'm at. They don't. They don't call me with that foolery. They mm -hmm. know that. I'm not around, but when I do come around, mm -hmm. I, when I come, I come. Mm -hmm. Roll out the red carpet. You see what I'm saying? Good like, evening. It's it's one of them. What 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 the, they used to say? Pull up in that you can't. Uh, well, I don't know what that. Yeah. So like it's just it's different. So when I do come out, mm -hmm. I I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna have a good time, and mm -hmm. you know, like I can't I, I can't go to the family barbecue no more. It just it's just not. Mm -hmm. But when I do go. I'm, I'm going. There. I'm going to pay for all of it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's yeah. a different kind of show right, up. You, right. When you show up, you got to show up, and right. so you know that's that. And the last piece I would just say is uh, serve your way to success. Mm, yeah. Okay. I got that from my mentor, you know, and I and that's why I gravitated towards him. Shout out to my mentor, Mr. Nehemiah Davis. Mm -hmm. He uh, you know, he always talking about his success is predicated on serving other people, and I said, damn. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. You know, like I feel like I've always been blessed because I've always been looking out for other people. Like, I've never tried to figure out, am I going to be okay? Because I figured out a long time ago that I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to be good. And my blessings come through helping other people and just really just having a servitude, like a, a servant leader type of attitude. And so if you really want to go to the top, don't fall in love with the slogan that is lonely at the top because it ain't. Mm -hmm. That's a selfish leader mentality. Mm -hmm. It's not lonely at the top. If you serve your way to success, you're going to be able to help people. You're going to bring people along with you. Facts. So, that's what I would lead the people with, man. It just kind of really just shift the mindset of how you're looking at things and, and, and how you accept things and how you project things and how things are looking. And the, the very last piece is if you have a goal, if you have a dream, and you believe in it, stop asking other people for permission. Just go after it. Go get it. Figure it out. Find a way. Mm -hmm. Get you a mentor. Yep. Because the mentor is going to GPS you from where you at Facts. to where you're trying to go. If you work at a job, mm -hmm. And you try to be a successful six figure entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna get that by yourself. Right, right. I I can't. I couldn't get get in my car today from Chicago and drove to New York without the GPS. Facts. I would have got lost as hell. Yeah. And you'd be like, <laughs> "Where you at, brother? The, the show about to start." He's like, "Brother, I'm, I'm in Texas, brother. I, I got lost." Look, I would have punched it in the GPS. I wouldn't ask no questions. I right. would I would have followed. It would have said left, right. I would have followed it. Right. So it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. If you want to get into entrepreneurship, you, you you set your goals, your dreams down. You go get your mentor. Mm -hmm. And you don't ask questions. You just go. You just let them guide you, and you just go. Right. That's what I'm going to leave the people with, man. Man, I love it. I absolutely love it. Before we wrap this thing up, let the people know where they can find you. And also, I know you I know, I know, know, you made mention, of course, of your program and everything yep. else. Tell the people where they can find you and also what you have to offer here today. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Facebook. You can find me on Facebook at Dion Cooper, just my regular name. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Instagram is at Mr. Phenomenal Power. Mm -hmm. So you can follow me there. And then if you click the link in any one of my bios, it's automatically going to be already set up. So if you literally want to get my DIY credit ebook where I break down the whole Metro 2, right. like the, the process to get the bankruptcies out, all of that, it's all in there. Like right. You can go get that. Like grab that. Like go get that with no delay. Same thing with the manufacturer spend. I got a manufacturer spending ebook. I break down three healthy ways that you can actually potentially get into the manufacturer spending game and start utilizing your credit and turning that into cash. Right. Like, I'm talking about, listen, price is only issuing the assets of value. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you're about to get something, there's got to be a cost associated with it. But if the value is there, don't worry about what you're spending. Facts. Right? So you got to go get those. And then if you feel like you just need somebody to mentor you from where you at to where you're trying to go, you need that GPS, you want to tap in with me, you can get into my mentorship program. So I teach Literally, how to start a six-figure credit repair company. Mm. Like, how to manufacture spend. Right. How to apply for business credit. Right. Like, how to get approved for over 100K in business credit, business funding. Like, I teach all of that stuff in my mentorship program. So, if people want to get in touch with me, they want to get tapped in, all they got to do is just follow me on social media. Right. And I'm a, I'm a pretty pretty approachable guy. Yeah. So, you, you yeah. can DM me. But 
If you literally want to get started right away, click them links in my bio. And you you go also send the links, bro. I'll put them in the description of the cool, video as well. Cool, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, we'll do that. But it's gonna be on this video, and it's gonna be in my bio, so they can just easily just tap in with me. I got them. And there we go, Mister Phenomenal, brother. I appreciate. you, Listen, brother. man. Hey, that that. <laughs> I'm, I might not sleep tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I might not sleep tonight. Listen, brother, thank you so much for your time. You too, brother. The wisdom, the game, the jewels, and the gems. And for thank sure. you to each and every single one of you for tapping in. And if you haven't already, and if you haven't, you're selfish. I, I don't know why you wouldn't have done it by now. But if you haven't, it's all right. It's all right. Because all you got to do is take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right in the here, right now. If you haven't already, just go ahead and slap that like button to show this video some love. Yep. I'm Marv Francois. This is my guy, Mr. Dion Cooper, a.k.a. Mr. Phenomenal. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. As always, thank you, and God bless. Peace.